Today, I'm going to share my journey surviving 500 days in hardcore Minecraft. I've already taken on some big projects in this series, but this video proved to be the biggest test of my dedication. The main goals for this episode? Finish all the builds I had planned for the village and complete every single advancement before day 500. We left off around day 350, and after finishing the beacon, I decided it was finally time to start working on some builds in the village. After a quick peek at the planning board and some testing in a super flat world, it was time to get to work. Having just murdered 21,000 Endermen, I thought it might be a good idea to start with the church so I could confess my sins. By day 355, the church was complete, and that night, I publicly apologized to everyone who would listen. For the next few days, I gathered all the materials I would need for the library into two shulkers, and then left one on the ground to despawn for an added challenge. Having no replacements, it was time to pay a visit to my old friends in the end. With my shells restocked, I got all the materials again and began working on the village library. This build ended up being a little bigger than I intended, and it even overhangs the wall a bit, but that just meant I had more space inside, and more space inside meant more space for bookshelves, and more space for bookshelves meant more books, and more books meant- On day 368, I decided it was time to make a new mine within the village walls. Yes, I already had a mine not far from the village, but it wasn't exactly my favorite build. And as for functionality, mining in waist high waters isn't what I had in mind when I built this place. So I built a much better one, this time in the side of a hill which felt way more natural. I decided it would make the most sense to have the mine lead directly to the blacksmith, so that's what I worked on next. The blacksmith ended up being my favorite build in the village, and not because it was the nicest looking build. You see, it's not what's on the outside that matters most, but on the inside. Up until this point, I'd been smelting most of my items manually using my off-brand super smelter, but it was time for an upgrade. I built a real super smelter under the blacksmith attaching the input to the campfires and the output to the water next to the anvil. So anytime I need something smelted, I can toss it into the fire and within a minute, smelted items will begin to pop up and go into this barrel. With the blacksmith complete, I spent the next 15 days adding some smaller details that really just brought this place to life. I built some docks, market stalls, a graveyard, connected all the paths, added a well, bushes, a wheat field, and a custom tree. For the last build, I wanted to see if I could squeeze a small sugarcane farm into the attic of the library. And it worked. But it also didn't. The farm fit okay, but it wasn't big enough to give me the paper supply I needed on its own. Nonetheless, I decided I'd keep it. Day 399, the village was complete, and I'm really proud of how this place turned out. I've never built anything like it before, and it's cool to look back at what it used to look like before I showed up. But there was no time to reminisce. I only had 101 more days to finish all the advancements, which sounds like a lot, but let's just say I made a few mistakes that really set me back along the way. I decided to start things off with the adventuring time achievement, since I only had four biomes left to discover. I poked around the save file a bit and found that those four biomes were the Windswept Forest, Windswept Gravelly Hills, Wooded Badlands Plateau, and Stony Peaks. I found the Gravel Hills quite easily next to my Deep Dark biome, but after 40 minutes of aimlessly flying around and playing matchmaker, I finally gave in and decided to use Chunk Base. After all, who is Dora without the map? Definitely not an explorer. So, using Chunk Base, I completed the rest of the biomes in no time at all, and I even knocked up, I mean, knocked out some of the breeding along the way. I made it back on day 402, and for the next two advancements, I needed to summon my inner Robin Hood. To complete Sniper Duel, I needed to kill a skeleton from at least 50 blocks away. And for Bullseye, I needed to hit the Bullseye from at least 30 blocks away. Easy. I then remembered the wise words of my grandfather. To become as light as a rabbit, you must first find a cow and stab it. These next few were pretty easy, so wax on, wax off. 
New crossbow. Can I hit this water bucket? No. Two birds, one arrow. Sound of music. This time? Still no. Returning home on day 405, I was greeted by a new face. One of the cat variety. And since it was already locked in my basement, I decided to tame it. After that, I crafted up a trusty spyglass and went back to adventuring. I bred some turtles along the- I bred some turtles along the way and waited patiently to see the baby, before realizing that turtles lay eggs. And, well, I didn't have that kind of patience. Hey, is that a bird? Yep. Is that a balloon? Sort of. Is that an advancement that requires me to respawn the Ender Dragon in my transformed end dimension? Yeah, so basically I'm an idiot. I completely forgot this advancement existed, and the only way for me to complete it without ruining my end dimension is to take the pillars down manually and rebuild them after. Knowing that one was going to take several grueling hours, I decided to put it at the end of my list. And what better way to relieve some stress than killing some mobs? After killing the zombified hoglin and a silverfish, the final mob I needed was the ravager. So I made my way to the raid farm, played matchmaker, killed my first ravager, and just like that, the monsters were hunted. Day 407, I decided it was time to take on the Star Trader advancement, which meant I had to get a villager up to the height limit and trade with him. I spent the next 15 minutes building a giant water elevator, while wondering why this was an advancement in the first place. While waiting for the villagers to wake up, I got myself into a sticky situation. Day 409, I sent a farmer to space and bought his bread. Sadly, the platform wasn't big enough for the both of us, so he sacrificed himself so I could live on. A true hero. I used sand to remove the- Now the only advancements I had left in the adventure tab were to spyglass the ender dragon and strike a villager with lightning. I already decided to save the ender dragon for last, and the villagers would just have to wait until the next thunderstorm. So it was time to move on to the husbandry tab. And what better way to start it than a relaxing fishing trip with my favorite mobs and catching my first fish. And catching my first fish. I then proceeded to catch some more fish so I could tame all the cat variants. Day 410, I had all the fish I needed for the cats and knocked out another quick advancement. I gathered a shulker of supplies so I could breed some animals while searching for the cats and set off on my journey. I spent the next four days flying from village to village playing matchmaker and taming every new cat I could find. Day 413, I checked a few more villages, found some stuff I needed to breed axolotls, and had tamed every single cat in the game except for the black cat. I continued looking until day 415, when I stopped at home to regain my sanity. If I had to describe my mental state with one clip, I think this one would suffice. Needless to say, I needed a break, so I took a minute to clear my head, and that's when I had a true big brain moment. The black cat happens to be the only variant in the game that has a 100% chance to spawn at a specific location. Witch huts. With my motivation renewed, I took a trip to the nearest swamp, found a witch hut, stole her cat, and completed the advancement. After returning the cat to my nether portal, I decided to look for pandas and ocelots for the breeding advancement. It wasn't long at all before I found a pair of pandas hanging out in the bamboo forest. And captured a pair of ocelots too. With those out of the way, there were only six more animals left to breed. There were llamas, donkeys, axolotls, mushroom cows, hoglins, and striders. And while on the topic of striders, I decided it would be a good time to complete the other two advancements too. The first one was easy, but for the second one, I had to recreate a lava lake in the overworld. Now, according to Minecraft, this qualifies as a lake. Just don't question it. Day 420 was lit. I finally put the All Blocks beacon to use and finished the respawn anchor and lodestone advancements. Day 421, I began working on the other husbandry advancements. I think I was still recovering from day 420 though, because all I remember is going on a crazy ride with a unicorn or something. <laughs> Day 422, I got a little hungry and ordered one of everything.
Next, I wanted to complete Uneasy Alliance. Well, I guess I didn't really want to, but it needed to be done. I followed an easy tutorial by Guggle that would allow me to trap a ghast and move it to the overworld. But I clearly didn't pay attention, because this is a nether waste biome and it was supposed to be built in a soul sand valley. With the trap rebuilt, all I had to do was wait. It took a lot of convincing to get the first ghast into the minecart, but when I finally did, I quickly learned that there wasn't enough room on the other side of the portal. So I cleared out a bigger area, waited for another ghast, and this time everything went according to plan. To be blunt, this next one was painful. I've never attempted to complete the How Did We Get Here advancement, but there are several hours worth of preparation needed before you can attempt it, and if you make a mistake, well... For those of you who don't know, How Did We Get Here requires the player to have every effect active at the same time. I started off by brewing all the potions I would need, and then realized I needed three more Nautilus shells for the conduit. So it was finally time to break out the old fishing rod. But first, I had to make it. Day 431, I returned home with my new rod, and decided I wasn't going to stop fishing until I had all the shells. And on day 434, I finally had them. With the conduit crafted, the next step was to get a full beacon for all 6 effects. That way I wouldn't need as many potions. While farming the wither for the last beacon, a small family of chickens were caught in the crossfire. Unfortunate. For them at least. Upon returning home, I realized it was raining, so I decided to wait a few minutes to see if it would turn into a thunderstorm, and sure enough... I grabbed my fork and raced to the neighboring village to transform this villager into a villagette. Things were looking very promising, it was only day 436 and I had just two advancements remaining, plus a few hidden ones that we'll get into later, but I had no idea what was to come. In 1.19 you need the new darkness effect, which can only be gotten from a naturally generated shrieker so I had no choice but to do it in the deep dark. I found a spot with a shrieker, isolated it, and cleared some space around it. Then I placed down the beacon, set up the conduit, and went to the end. Nope. Why the end? Well, one of the effects needed for how did we get here is the levitation effect, which you get from shulkers. So it was time to kidnap one. As fun as that sounds, it was not. First, I needed to find an end city that had an end gateway nearby. That way I wouldn't have to transport the shulker too far. The plan was to trap the shulker in a boat and use my fishing rod to pull it around. The first attempt didn't go so bad. I got it into the gateway, repaired my fishing rod, made some healing potions in case it... does that? Attempt 2. This time, I decided to use rails and minecarts to make things easier, which could also be reused if something went wrong. See, I completely forgot that putting a boat into a minecart generates infinite momentum. Have a great time. A silly miscalculation on my part. My physics teacher would be so disappointed. To fix it, I needed to add something with infinite stopping power. A wall. This time, I got it. And I wasn't taking any chances. Shout out to my froggy friend here for being with me during these trying times. Feeling prepared, I sent the shulker through to the overworld. Then the nether, and then the deep dark. It was now day 446. That part took about two hours, but I wasn't done yet. I also needed the dolphin's grace effect, which meant I had to move a dolphin from the ocean, through the nether, and over to the deep dark. It ended up being surprisingly easy. I set up the holding cell, kidnapped the dolphin, locked it in place, and gave it a fitting name. I now had everything I needed to give it a try. I finished a raid for Hero of the Village, got Bad Omen, got Spoon, prepared my inventory, rewatched the tutorial a couple times, and... Yeah, this is just embarrassing. I completely forgot about the shulker step, ate the puffer fish early, which made it seem like the arrows were missing, and summoned the warden. Now, I prepared an escape tunnel, so I was fine, but as for my shulker and dolphin friends, not so much. Short of dying, this couldn't have gone worse, but giving up was not an option. Partly because this is sort of like my job now, but also because I had to redeem myself after that complete embarrassment. I may have lost just about everything, but what I gained was knowledge, and what took me 10 days to complete the first time, I finished in just 6 this time. 
I even got the shulker to duplicate itself and added Ill Mango's Warden Switch to make sure my friends were safe. How thoughtful of me. Day 457, everything was ready. I activated the Warden Switch, popped the potions, ate the apple, remembered the shulker part, but didn't realize I was crouched when I tried to hop into the water. It was still recoverable, but I guess Finn was still upset about Just Keep Swimming's brutal death because he wouldn't give me Dolphin's Grace. Frustrating, but not nearly as much of a setback since my friends were still intact. For the sake of not showing the same process four times and embarrassing myself even more, I'll make the rest of this story a little faster. Day 458, I got all the potions and found a brown panda while looking for an ancient city. Day 461, I found said ancient city and looted it until day 450. Day 461, I found said ancient city and looted it until day 462, when I found the notch apples that I needed, which I later learned weren't needed because the beacon was already giving me the resistance effect. Day 464, I almost got Dan TDM'd, and I quickly learned why you don't give the witches time to heal the evokers. A close call, but not close enough. Death rained down from above, and I got Special Emerald, Angry Axeman, and Spoon. That night, I was ready for attempt 3, or at least I thought I was. I even acted out what I was supposed to do in my head first. Twice. But what I didn't know is that this attempt was a fail before I even popped the first potion, because I wasn't hungry enough to eat the pufferfish. At this point, my madness turned to sadness. I removed my pants... But all was not lost. I knew that I had the steps memorized, and on day 467, with pure determination... I did it. I now knew how I got here, but I still had places to go. Remember those hidden advancements I mentioned? There are three in total. The first is Arbalistic. To complete that, I needed to kill five different kinds of mobs with a single crossbow shot. So, on day 468, I gathered up some animals, and uh, well, there's no way to soften the blow of this one here, but I sent them to heaven. Good thing I built that church. The last in advancements were both related to LA's. See what I did? For you've got a friend in me, I played fetch with the LA using some dirt. Difficult stuff. For birthday song, the LA needs to drop a cake next to a note block. But this is a jukebox. Be right back. Okay, happy birthday, I guess. And that's every advancement except for the one I've been saving for last. This one is just pain. It's like the saying, you've made your bed, now lie in it. Except instead of a bed, it's a project that took a week long to complete, and instead of laying in it, I have to destroy it. And destroy it I did, but not before using a very useful feature from the mod Lightmatica. Lightmatica allows you to save holographic schematics of your builds that show exactly where to place blocks. By using it, I could make sure that my end island would look exactly the same after I rebuilt it. Days 472 to 476, I removed all the blocks I used to make the candles and stored them in chests in the stronghold. Then I removed the candle holders and on day 479 it was time to respawn the dragon. Watching those obsidian pillars regenerate hurt it a little. In order to stop the dragon from flying through and breaking the skulk in middle tower, I used a simple trick with water to hold it in place. I sniped the crystals and waited a few minutes. The dragon flew right into the trap, and I made sure to get the advancement before ki- Yeah, I guess I got so caught up in killing the dragon that I forgot why I respawned it in the first place, but eventually, the realization settled in. Oh my god. So I did it again, this time making sure I got the advancement. And there it was, all the advancements completed in my hardcore world. But there were still 20 days left until 500. In that time, I wanted to make sure that I left the end island exactly how it was before the episode. I spent three hours mining the obsidian pillars to slim them down, taking us to day 489, where I began rebuilding the candles. By day 496, the end was back to normal, 
I gathered up my two and a half shulkers of obsidian, repaired my gear, and learned that obsidian is my third most mined block. Day 497, I had important matters to settle. You see, Travis asked if I'd name a villager Mr. Beast in the last episode. So, here it is. Everyone, meet Mr. Beast the Priest. Going forward, I'd like to do names like this in all my videos. So if you have any name suggestions for items, tools, or mobs, leave them in the comments and I'll pick a few of my favorites each episode. For the last few days, I tried to add the chunk loader to the warden switch so it would be active no matter where I was on the map. But for some reason, the timing for activating the shrieker was wrong and wardens were still spawning. So, I began designing a timer of my own, but that's going to need to be finished later, because I'm bad at redstone, it's day 500, and I'm running out of time. 